Welcome everyone to Enter the Mind podcast. This is episode one. I'm Robert Nelson and I'm here with my co-host. Kira Carlin. And we started this podcast for several reasons. This is episode one. So this is a beginning. This is a launching point. And uh, I think I can speak for the both of us when I say I'm very excited about what's going to come out of this. Um, you may be wondering, well, who is Robert and Kira? How do they know each other? Uh, we met at a self, I guess you could call it a self-help convention, but maybe a business convention. Um, it's called the 10X Growth Con and it's put on by Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone does have a very large focus on real estate and business and sales. He excels in sales. How, oh yeah, that's the uh, symbol for 10X, right? Probably, but it's not working. <laughs> and uh, however, Grant Cardone, um, although it, he does specialize in sales, business, entrepreneurship, uh, he and real estate, he really, really infuses self-help into everything that he does. Uh, you can't achieve levels, uh, billions of dollars in real estate holdings like he has uh, without understanding your mind. And hence the beginning of uh, this topic. And you might think, okay, well, mind, what does mind have to do with, you know, making money or business or real estate? Well, it has a lot to do because to reach those levels, you need to tame your mind. The human mind is not designed for like success, just straight out of the gate. Otherwise you would look around and everyone around you would be successful, yourself included. And of course people are going to say, oh yeah, well, it depends how you define success and this and that. Yes, there's, there's some truth to that. We're not going to discuss what is success today. Um, the purpose of today's episode is to give an introduction uh, of who is Robert, who's Kira, so that you guys know kind of who we are, where we're coming from, what our stories are basically, so that you know who's, who's the voice behind, behind this, uh, this podcast. Um, the second task I want to accomplish today is to briefly kind of overview what to expect in the next several episodes. Uh, we have a purpose in mind for what we want to accomplish with this podcast, and um, we want to stay close to that focus. Okay. With that being said, I'd like to pass it to you, Kira, to kind of introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about your story. Hey, everybody. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for listening. Um, so my name is Kira Carlin. I'm 23 years old. And um, a little bit about me is uh, I recently, like two years ago, I got out of like super bad friendship. And when that lowest point sort of hit me, I woke up and I kind of just had like this awakening and I made this like subconscious commitment that like I was going to rock this shit. And I feel like I had that even during the friendship. And once I felt like I wasn't getting where I knew I should be within that friendship, I sort of enhanced that subconscious thought that was always in my heart to sort of propel me forward. And, um, you know, I've always been the type of person to, you know, not care what anybody else has to say about me because I know what I can do. I know who I am. And you're not going to tell me anything other than that because I, I get to decide that. Um, so when I was six years old, I had a uh, lawnmower accident and my right foot uh, was severed um, off the toes of my right foot by lawnmower. And I remember them telling me and like telling my mom and everything that like I would never be able to walk again. And I was just kind of like, mm. Uh, no, that's no. So I actually uh, wound up walking again on my own without ever going through any physical therapy. I just got sick and tired of not being able to walk. Um, and I just started walking again. Um, and I, you know, I, I run a track, I do gymnastics. Um, I still run to this day. I can do anything. I don't have the most amazing balance, but point is I did it when they said that I couldn't. Um, not only that, but after I got out of the bad friendship, um, I did go see a psychologist because, um, I thought maybe they'd be able to help me 
Um, like, I'm like, all right, well, I've gone through this. I'm not going to be arrogant and think that I can do it on my own. I am going to go and seek help. And these people, like, I just like felt like they didn't genuinely care about me and that I was just like another number in their office who they kind of had these programmed answers to and these programmed solutions. And it didn't matter who I was. I don't give a fuck about who I was. They just cared about giving me that programmed solution. So it's like, it had nothing to do with me, but it had everything to do with their program solution. So it's like, whatever solutions they had, were not, you know, given to somebody because they thought this specific solution would be right for that person. They give it to this person because it's the only solution they have. So, um, point is she tried to give me these pills. Um, and I had just gotten home. I was really mentally damaged. I had absolutely no confidence, no confidence at all. And she wanted to give me this pill uh, to where I had to stay inside all summer. Like I wasn't allowed in the sun and I wasn't allowed to drink. So like if I wanted to meet up with some of my old friends who were there before everything happened and go get a drink and catch up, I wasn't allowed. If I wanted to go catch some natural serotonin and be in my happy place at the beach, I wasn't allowed. And I asked her if she had anything different. She said no, and she was pretty rude. And she was like, um, you know, no, if you really want to heal, if you're really taking this seriously, we are going to give you these pills and you're going to have to take them. And I looked that woman dead in her eye sockets of her soul and I walked out of her office. <laughs> um, I walked out of her office that day and that subconscious drive to fucking win got bigger and it grew deeper. And it's grown so much since that day. Um, and even since the, the first time that I opened The Secret, um, which is by Rhonda Byrne. And um, ever since I opened the book that day, my life changed. It was like, it was like a warping and like it changed. And um, so pretty much ever since that day, I... I have dedicated every ounce of my being, every molecule, every atom, every thought to my future and to what I want to be as a, as a human. So to who I want to be to influence others is what I build myself around because you can't influence anybody if you are not an example. So I build myself every single day with, you know, tearing apart my human mind, um, admitting when I'm wrong, you know, AKA humility, um, you know, being grateful, trying new techniques, not techniques, but rather trying new things that sort of have a little light bulb in my mind. I'll try them out. If they don't work great, that's just something that I write down and that I can teach somebody else. And I'm doing all of this work right now. So that way my clients and other people in this world can see me, see me as an example and know that I, I have done it before you. I've done it first. So hopefully this can work for you. And um, that's pretty much, it's pretty much my story. Um, I'm pretty foul mouthed. Uh, I curse a lot. I'm, I'm a big swearer. Um, and I, I love to write and I love to run. I love exercising. I love cooking. I'm super vegan. Um, so that's just kind of like a little bit like on the, on the less like formal. I don't know if that's the right word, but side of me. Um, so thanks for listening. And that's a little bit about me. Um, Robert, did, what do you, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, uh... Super quick before I respond, I'm going to switch the video to side by side view. Uh, oh, cool. Okay, cool. I forgot to do that. So we'll see how the YouTube ends up, uh, but the audio is great. So uh, great. All right. So let's go from there. The um, yeah, I like what you mentioned. And uh, what I gathered from that is kind of a confirmation of how I understand your personality uh, just from. Uh, knowing you the brief uh, number of months that uh, we've known each other is that you've got sort of like a tenacity for living. And uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, that's something that I dig and something that I seek to exhibit myself, right? Like to me, living is like 
living and the mind kind of go hand in hand and living to me is almost sacred, right? It's, it's people make these other things sacred when really what should be sacred is living itself and how well someone lives, right? So what is, what would that even look like in my life? Well, when I was, uh, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago and, uh, I excelled in, in math. I was like this, whatever. I was like a math skateboarder, right? So I was like, I, I wouldn't call myself a nerd because I wasn't really a nerd. Like I was super good at school, but but I was like, I don't know. I would I would hang out with the cool kids as much as I would hang out with the the, the nerds in the AP classes, right? So I I liked both crowds. You know, they have they have different strengths, right? And that's reality. I like to say reality is diversity. So uh, in any case, I uh, went off to college majoring in math got an internship at a fortune 500 company uh, doing computer programming for, yeah, for a fortune 500 company. And I was earning great money. It was just one year into college. So, I mean, it's very rare to get an internship your freshman year. And, uh, but the timing was, uh, it turned out to be good because what I learned from that is um, it was my first introduction to uh, really being an adult. I was now in uh, you know, a a big boy job, so to speak. You know, I was not uh, scooping ice cream anymore. I was like, I was literally doing 40 hours a week at a desk in a cubicle, like with a bunch of other grown adults who had little kids at home. They were supporting families, but something stuck out to me. And what stuck out to me was that all of the adults around me, they just, a lot of them didn't enjoy what they did. They they dreaded Mondays. They looked forward to the weekend. All I heard when I was trying to get my work done in my cubicle was, oh, I can't wait till Friday. Can't wait till Friday. And then Thursday comes and Friday's tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's payday. Then Friday comes. Like, All right. Today's Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy. I'm like, I'm like, wait, do you guys like, you don't choose to work here? Like, is, is, is there something I'm missing about this? Like, are you like, you know, I thought when you're a kid, yeah, you have to do what your parents tell you. And then when you're an adult, you kind of do what you want. But that was not what I saw. Uh, that caused me, that event caused me to completely abandon psycho, uh, not psycho, computer science as a major. And I ended up studying psychology. I did get a bachelor's degree in psychology, but it doesn't mean much because one year of working in the field will teach you more than four years of sitting in a classroom. Now, what I learned then from my, I'm 33 now, by the way. So, uh, so I, I've been working for like over eight years in the field of psychology and in different contexts I've worked with, you know, high school students on, uh, on thinking about their careers. I've worked uh, in some more intensive direct service roles in mental health. And I always loved to work at the most intense levels, right? Because it's the most challenging and it requires the most skills. And so what does that look like? Intensive levels of psychology. That means I'm working with clients who um, regularly are admitted to the psych hospital uh, for various reasons, whether they have schizophrenia and they're completely uh, out of touch with reality or whether they're, uh, they are just super depressed and uh, try to uh, try to commit suicide. They're like a very, very um, serious uh, illnesses, right? I've, I've walked into psych wards three in, through three sets of locked doors into a psych ward. And one of my clients yelled my name, came up to me and gave me a fist bump, right? And that was not the only client who recognized me in that psych ward, right? I've driven homeless people, my clients, obviously, I knew them, driven homeless people to the community center to take a shower, but I had to persuade them to store their knife in the trunk of my car so that it was a safe trip, right? Like this is... This is me in the real, like down to earth, getting the work done, right? That's what, that's how you learn real psychology, real mind stuff, not uh, sitting off in a book, reading peer reviewed studies and blah. There is some value to that, of course, um, but I kind of empathize with you, uh, with your story of the psychologist. There are good psychologists out there, uh, but there also um, are people that probably just went into it because their doc, their parents gave them the choice of, you get, you either become a lawyer, a psychologist, or a uh, medical doctor or something, right? And people just get funneled into these uh, professions. But uh, it, it's a pity because it's disrespectful to the human race, to human 
to human beings uh, in general, and, and it's disrespectful to life. Uh, I, my philosophy is the opposite. I want people to thrive. I want people to, uh, to make the most of their potential. Okay. So that's, uh, that's my story in short. Um, before we go into, uh, or we, before we wrap up this episode by talking about what to expect in the next, uh, in the next few uh, weeks, we're going to do this once a week, every, uh, every Monday. Um, so stay tuned. If you're watching on YouTube, expect an upload every Monday. If you're listening to this on, um, on a podcast platform, then expect that upload to also be made on Mondays. Um, before I, we go into what to expect, Kira, did you have any other things to add? Um, are you still good at skateboarding? <laughs> I teach skateboarding now. I'm, I'm retired, so I, uh, I don't like to, uh, no more jumping downstairs for me. I, uh, I don't like the injuries, <laughs> but. Well, yeah. that was my other question. Yeah. I thought, uh. I thought our audience would, would like to know, well, does he still skateboard? Is he still, like, still doing that? Good question. Good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it was uh, still skateboarder at heart, I would say. But, uh, but yes, um, thank you for asking. And people should know this uh, about Kira because they, people who are watching this, you know, they got to kind of understand, like, who are these people talking about psychology? Why are they uh, fit to speak on the subject? Okay, Kira's uh, a mind coach, as am I, right? So when we, uh, when we started, uh, we sat in the same row at that convention. And when we were talking, we, it became apparent that we both were uh, calling ourselves mind coaches. And then that obviously led to a discussion, uh, which kind of revealed to me that, oh, this, this person has a lot of similar ideas to me. Like, and uh, I think you're very, uh, you're very precocious for your age. You're very aware, very... <laughs> very uh, psychologically mature, I think I would say, because, uh, because yeah, yeah, you, uh, you could hang, you were like, you know, talk about self-limiting beliefs, you know, like it's the back of your hand. And I'm like, hell yeah, this is like, this is, this is what I'm talking about. This is my jam. Right. But you know what, we, but you know, your listeners, right. You guys are listening to real people here talking, right. I'm not going to, I might mention psychology, psychological studies, you know, and research, but uh, but no, I'm talking, I'm going to be talking about like real, like cutting edge stuff that, um, that will help people manage their emotions, understand their emotions, and really just like think about the mind, like become aware that it's this, like it's an actual like thing almost to be, to be attentive to, right? It's almost like um, we've talked before about the house metaphor, uh, thinking of the mind as a house. Um, that needs to be in order, that you need to uh, clean regularly, that you need to inspect. And yes, I would agree 100%. Your mind needs to be inspected. Your thoughts need to be inspected. The whole reason that people suffer in this world uh, from mental causes, well, one of, one of the large reasons, right, is because of undetected um, thoughts or undetected thought patterns, I should say right so that's one reason now what's the upside before i pass it back to you what's the upside to thinking about your thoughts and becoming more self-aware right well see when kira and i were at this convention what i saw in kira is number one dancing freely in front of crowds whenever the music was playing even if she was the only one dancing now that, that may remind you of that very common uh, cliche self-help phrase um, that goes, uh, dance like no one's watching or dance like you're the only one. Like this, this silly, you know, superficial advice. Well, I'll guarantee you that the person who wrote that quote is not dancing by themselves in front of a crowd, a, like a stadium full of people, right? Kira is, that's the real deal. So real behavior trumps talk. Behavior and actions trump talk any day, if you ask me, okay? Number two, Kira's running up to all of the speakers after they walk off the stage and they're in the hotel. This was like Mandalay Bay, right? Kira's running up to every speaker, no fear. Just say, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Kira Carlin, let's collaborate, blah, 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 right? I was like, that is dope, you know? Because that is what the world needs more of. 
The world needs more of people who are not afraid to live. Everyone is so caught up in their, in their head. Oh, what if this, what if that, what if, you know, well, I don't know if I want to take this new job because da, 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 da. And so everybody is buying in to these, their own doubts. Everyone's buying into their own doubts. And it, if I'm passionate about anything, it's that I believe everyone deserves a shot at living life. Everyone deserves a shot at being able to walk up to a stranger and say hello. Everyone deserves a shot at understanding their minds and being able to identify negative thoughts and throw them out the window so that they can leave, live freely. Everyone deserves a shot at overcoming past negative experiences and just totally dropping them, moving on and just creating the rest of their life. So that's kind of how I feel about this, but let's pass it back to you to uh, conclude this, this day's episode. Well, I mean, wow. I feel like you chopped so much good stuff into that like small speaking time. I loved it. And I do think that everyone deserves a shot. And I feel like if we're talking about the importance of the human mind right now, um, to sort of give people a little taste of how the rest of the podcast episodes are going to go. I mean, yeah, it's definitely going to be about the human mind and the importance of, you know, getting inside your own mind is extremely important because once you know yourself and accept yourself, you sort of give yourself a subconscious permission to go ahead and um, see the thoughts that are going on in your mind as, as opposed to being extremely judgmental about yourself, um, being in, in fear of other people judging you, which I'm wondering if that has to do with you judging yourself inside. Like if you're judging yourself inside, is that where the fear sort of roots from? If you're being scared of people judging you, like the fear of judgment, Anyways, maybe, maybe that'll be an episode, maybe it won't. Um, but, um, you know, if, if you're judging yourself as opposed to judging yourself and sort of not allowing yourself to fully express who you are because you've rejected so much of you. And when you re reject so much of you, it, like you're, you're, you're not fully you. And you are awesome like you have it like you whoever you is listening to this you know you have so many cool freaking things about you like i meet people and i'm like wow like this person is amazing like they blow my freaking mind i'm in awe of how awesome these people are that i meet and i i think it's it's really important to accept those things that you think so that way you can understand the thoughts that are going in your mind. So it's like, say I met Robert, for example, and when I met him, I'm like, wow, I think this guy is really, really cool. And I think it'd be so much fun to work with him. Oh my God, maybe we can be friends. Uh, maybe we'll even do a podcast. I wonder if we'll ever go out for tacos. Um, you know, things like that. But if I were to, to sort of judge myself for thinking those thoughts and sort of like put myself in this like, or like little hole or like little time out for having feelings or desires or questions about somebody that I just meet or questions about, you know, myself in general, but that's, that's a different topic. So, you know, say I did that with Robert and, you know, I sort of hid those things. Then you are training your subconscious mind to hide those parts. You reject what you're thinking. And when you reject what you're thinking, it sort of is, you can't be authentic. And authentic being authentic and being original and just like being you and like loving all the parts about yourself it's like it's it's so important it's so so mega important it's not needed you're not going to die without it you'll probably still live a cool happy life you know but like if it's something that you want to do to understand the human mind and your own human mind whoo I think that you'll really like the results, really, really like the results. I think that you'll find that your manifestations and your desires come in a lot easier. Um, 
you don't even have to tell people that you don't want them in your life anymore because they'll just gravitate out. <laughs> um, you'll probably just start like, you'll just, I think that you'll start to love yourself a lot more when you start, you know, getting into the human mind. I know I did. I know I, I have so much more self-love for myself than I did um, when I, I didn't care. And I thought I was quote unquote too cool for school. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I have to say. Awesome. Yeah. I like, I like hearing you talk about the mind because the phrases that you say kind of, I think they bring to the surface just the ways that the mind works like in, in real, in real ways. Like the, the tricky part about the mind is that it's invisible, right? So, you know, I could show you something physical like a car and then it could be like, okay, well, here's the engine, here's this, you know, here's the electrical, here's the radiator, right? And it's like, okay, you know, people can learn that and people can learn how to tinker with it, blah, blah, blah. The mind is, is similar in many ways, right? Like you can like, you know, it has these patterns of working and you can kind of tinker with it, but it's invisible. So it's like, how do you even, how do you even get started with that? Well, that's, that's what we're going to address in uh, this podcast. And it's going to be a limited number of episodes. Uh, it's, at this point, I'm not, we're not quite sure exactly how many it's going to be, but we're going to fit so much content into, uh, into these episodes. It's really, I really want this to be a resource uh, for people to go to for years and years to come that uh, anytime they need that, that little, you know, boost um, in whether it's motivation, you know, their own psychology, self-empowerment, self-esteem, um, confidence, uh, emotional confidence. I want them to say, boom, enter the mind podcast. I need to get re-listen to that episode. Uh, cue that thing up, share it with your friends. So there's a lot to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think we're at uh, 27 minutes. So I think we did it for today. Kira, any final thoughts? Um, I mean, thank you guys so much for listening. Like, I'm like so, so happy. And um, we can't wait to, you know, see what you have to say online. And we hope that you like it. Because, um, I mean, is this your first podcast, Robert? Uh, I did one uh, sort of like a hybrid podcast and live workshop thing called Spiritual Self-Defense. Uh, those can be found on YouTube if you search spiritual self-defense or my company existence first. But, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is a little bit, this is kind of like specialized, like we're like, this is a podcast. Like that was the intention of it. And uh, this is going to be uh, really solid stuff. This is going to be the real deal. So stay tuned and uh, you can uh, <laughs> look forward to episode two coming out next Monday. Yes. All right. I, I just peace out. Peace guys.